From stunning beaches and architecture to rustic cuisine, Santander absolutely blew me away when I went to visit for the first time. If you are planning to visit Santander, then this travel guide is for you, so keep watching. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Mel here, travel blogger based in London. After a fantastic trip to Santander, I decided to put together my top recommendations for a long weekend getaway or a one week holiday. So where is Santander? Nestled along Spain's north coast, near Bilbao, a little further away from San Sebastián. Santander is the capital city of the Cantabria region. Santander is a brilliant beach destination for a long weekend away. So how do you get around Santander? Santander is a very easy city to navigate, both on foot and on wheels. We rented a little Fiat Panda that got us from A to B perfectly. We hit the road straight from the airport, drove right into town with no problems whatsoever. There is plenty of parking all around the city and there's hardly any traffic. Driving in the city itself felt spacious and comfortable. If you do plan to drive around and explore different beaches, I really recommend renting a car just so you have more freedom and room to adventure, but only if you have confidence driving on the right hand side of the road. Santander might seem like a sleepy town for retired folks, but there's actually plenty of things to do and enjoy out there for every type of traveller. My first recommendation is to enjoy the views at Magdalena Peninsula. Full of greenery, surrounded by a roaring ocean, this craggy peninsula is the perfect place to take in peaceful ocean views and get your blood pumping with a hike through nature. The 69-acre Magdalena Peninsula is one of Santander's most popular destinations. As a cultural heritage site, the peninsula is home to a small zoo, a palace, and a small lighthouse. Next, savour a delicious morning coffee on El Sardinero Beach. Few things feel as Spanish summer as waking up early, strolling to your nearest cafe, bar, or coffee shop, sipping a cortada or a latte, whilst watching dawn break over the sea feels like the ultimate holiday wake up. If you're lactose intolerant like I am, then don't worry, because the newer or more hipster cafes have dairy-free milk alternatives like soya, oat, and almond. Otherwise, if you're at the more traditional cafes, you'd be better off getting a plain black coffee. One of the cafes we stumbled across was Galofa and Co in Santander, which we found when we were driving around and we really loved the strength of the bean in there. Next, I recommend trying specialty tapas dishes in Santander like Rabas. If there's one reason I constantly pilgrimage all over Spain, it's for the tapas. And if there's one thing you should try in Santander, it is their local version of calamari called rabas, or squid. The Santander version of calamares is battered, sprinkled with lemon juice, and when did anyone go wrong with a bit of seafood paella? Number four is wander around the medieval old town of Santa Llana del Mar. Only a 30 minute drive away from Santander sits Santa Llana del Mar, a sun-soaked old town known for its medieval tower, renaissance palaces, and stunning historic buildings. There is so much artistry in the cobblestone alleyways and grand arches. I love the simmering medieval atmosphere in this Spanish town, and for lunch we had the most beautiful seafood paella at a tapas bar, followed by a bacalao con tomata that had a sunfu coma on the drive back to Santander. Further beyond the town walls, there was also a field where these gorgeous, majestic white horses were grazing in grass in the afternoon sun. I really recommend coming to Santa Llana del Mar, especially if you've rented a car. Number five is visit the quirky Neptune statue at Playa del Camelo Beach. Nestled in the curve between Santander's coast and Magdalena Peninsula is Playa del Camelo, a rugged sandy beach alive with rock pools and rock formations. At the very top of the main slab of rock, which gives the beach its unique charm, sits a sculpture of Neptune or Poseidon, the god of fresh water and the sea, marked out by his iconic trident. It's pretty cool and makes for a cute photo opportunity. Number six is explore Santander's beautiful blue sandy beaches. Santander is coastal, so if you're looking to lose yourself in gorgeous beaches or blue horizons, Cantabria is full of beaches. We went to quite a few different beaches on our trip, and some of the ones I recommend, as well as Playa del Camelo, are Playa del Matalenas and El Sardinero Beach. Playa del Matalenas was my favourite beach because it was golden sands surrounded by a rocky cliff which helped protect you from the wind. Walking down from the car park was fairly steep though, so make sure you take your time going down and bring along snacks, water and beach towels if you're planning to go there. Next, get into nature and observe protected wildlife at Caracena National Safari Park. On our first day in Santander, we hopped into our rental car and rolled right into Caracena National Park, a natural 600-acre protected forest land reserve teeming with animals. 
Because the weather was breezy with light rain, the National Park was a great option for driving around on safari and exploring via the park's cable car network. While I like the feeling of being on safari, some of the animals aren't necessarily wild. They are still in captivity, but it is obviously much better than the zoo because they have room to roam. As it is a protected park, for endangered wildlife like elephants and grizzly bears, there are large portions of lands dedicated to their well-being. Better yet, you can only really experience those animals from above in the cable cars high in the sky. And this keeps people away from the animals and retains this safari feel, letting the animals do their natural thing down below. Overall, Cabarceno National Park is beautiful in terms of the forestry and the views. If you do go to Santander and you're going with a family or kids, then the safari park is a brilliant way to spend the day. Next, witness the gorgeous sunset at the Faro de Cabo Mayor, an 1800s lighthouse. After getting a mid-afternoon gelato and enjoying golden hour along El Sardinero Beach, we noticed that the sky was turning this beautiful fiery shade of orange. The sun was going down, so we hopped in our car and, rather than trying to drive to any particular destination, just decided to chase the colours of the sunset, which worked a treat. To our absolute delight and surprise, we were led down tree-lined roads up towards a gate where a few people were walking uphill towards this beautiful lighthouse in Parque de Cabo Mayor. The lighthouse itself was built in 1839 within a park and it is a very popular spot in Santander for beautiful walks along the coast and for viewing the lovely sunset. There's loads of parking bays and a cheeky little photo opportunity up there. So if you are a photographer, the lighthouse is the perfect place to go. And if you're planning to hang out there for the sunset, bring along a picnic or a bottle of wine and just enjoy yourself. Next is enjoy a sangria on El Sardinero beach. Is there anything more satisfying than sipping a big old fruity glass of sangria as you're watching sunset go down over the ocean? Probably not. At least twice during our trip, we decided to have lunch at a beachfront restaurant and have a jug of sangria. I'm not a huge drinker, but boy oh boy, Spanish wine is something else. It's beautifully made, rich, vibrant, fruity, and delicious. Highly recommended. Next is go hiking and discover the coast. I always find that just putting down your map and just going out to discover leads to finding the most beautiful places. Santander was no different. We hopped in the car, drove along the coast with no agenda and just went wherever the wind took us. We found such photogenic, scenic places, beautiful mountains, hills to hike, and I can't actually remember any of their names because we just decided to go with our intuition and follow the road signs. There is so much to explore along Santander's coastline and that rugged beauty is always worth seeking out. We sat there enjoying the views for hours every day. So should you visit Santander? Absolutely. Santander is truly beautiful. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe. If you have any questions about visiting Santander for the first time, please do drop me a comment. Catch you in the next video. Adios.